in today's video I thought I would talk about all the books I read in May. I read eight books. I read four books in Norwegians and I read two non-fiction books. They were both in Norwegians. But that's all I have to say about the stats. I just want to get into the pile of books that I read in May. The first book I read was The Call in My Urven, or They Call Me the Wolf by Sashant Shakar. This is the third book by the author that has been published and it's the third book I've read. I think that his debut novel was probably the best in my opinion. Though that being said, I really enjoyed this as well. It's a sort of a coming of age story. It's about a boy his mom is ethnical Norwegian and his dad is Pakistani. He kind of brings in both Pakistani and Norwegian into his upbringing. Then at some point his parents divorce. It's not just about being of kind of two cultures, but it's also about social class and how he doesn't really have a lot of money growing up and how after the divorce his mom struggles because she is disabled and she's on disability benefits and about his life. So it's a complex story in many ways and I really enjoyed it. It's really well written. Sesame Shagar is such a good author, in my opinion, and I am actually looking forward to his next books already. The next book that I read was this book, and it's called The Moment of Freedom, and it's the story of Abeda Raja. This is a non-fiction book by Håkon F. Heydal. This is the story of Abeda Raja who grows up not very far from here, but when she's fairly young, when she's going to start school, she is sent to Pakistan to her grandparents and she goes to school there. There's not a lot of affection and there's violence and she has her struggles being kind of not like the others, I guess. And then at some point she's sent back to Norway and she of course struggles then as well. She doesn't know the language, she has forgotten all the Norwegian she knew and she has to fit in again or try to fit in. But her parents are really, really strict. Her father is really abusive. He hits her mother and he hits her siblings. When she's 18 she is sent to Pakistan again to get married and she is forced into a marriage that is also violent. This story is about that marriage as well and about all the ordeals she has to go through in life. This was a really interesting and touching and gripping story and it's kind of strange to know that she is not that much older than I am and it happens not very far from where I currently live. So it's a very thought-provoking book in many ways. After having read that, I needed something different, something that is not non-fiction. <laughs> So I picked up a book that has been standing on my shelf since July and that was Conversations with Friends that I bought secondhand in Ireland last year. This is the story about Frances. She and her best friend, who's also her ex-girlfriend, they have this open mic poetry or performing poetry, spoken poetry thing and at one of those performances she and her ex-girlfriend meets a couple. The couple is a little bit older than them and the husband of the couple is a fairly well-known actor. It doesn't take very long before Frances realizes that she's kind of drawn to him. After a little while they start having an affair. That makes life fairly complicated. The main character of this book is by and I really enjoyed reading it and I don't have a lot to say about it but I think it's, it's it was a really really good read and I really enjoyed it. There's a Norwegian author called Cecilia Enger and she often uses historical events or people and put them into a fictional setting and writes about how the story could have been and that is also the case with the Svite Karta or the white map which is about two women. They were strong women and this is set over a hundred years ago. They have a romantic relationship but they have to hide it. Also they being very independent 
they start their own shop and things like that that is kind of looked down on by very many so they have to struggle to keep their position they have a lot of hurdles to climb it's all in all a very interesting and really good read when I started reading it I was not aware that it was an LGBTQIAP plus story but it is and I'm very happy and really enjoyed it as I keep saying about all the books I read, I guess. But yes, it's a really well written and, and a really interesting story. My next read was the book by the brother of the other book that I read that was non-fiction this month. And this is an autobiography by Abid Raja. He is younger than Abid Raja and he actually published his book before her. He is also a very prominent politician in Norway and the book is called Min Schill and his story on Frigjöring or my fault, a story about getting free or something like that. This is kind of, in many ways, it tells this not the same story because it's his story and the other book was her story uh, but this is a book that is about growing up in the same family but from his perspective he has his fights to fight for sure he has a disability that is making his life fairly difficult he is also beaten by his father he also falls in love with a girl and then he has to fight for their relationship they have to keep the relationship secret in the beginning and then when he tries to get acceptance for the relationship he wants to marry this girl for love but it's not accepted because the girlfriend's family is from a other class he really have to fight in that way i thought it was a really interesting story the politician abed raja it's not my favorite politician at all there's many things i can say about him i find him fairly conservative even though he's like in the liberal party but i find him quite conservative in many ways but i think this book kind of sheds a light on why he has become the person he is and why his views are as they are so that was very interesting i also finally got to read another book that i have had on my shelf for a little while and that is the quince gambit by walter travis which has been made into a netflix tv series that i actually watched after reading the book. This book is about Beth Herman who is an orphan after her mother passes away in a car crash. Her father, she doesn't know where it is. He's kind of out of the pictures a long time ago. And then one day she stumbles upon the janitor in the basement. He's sitting there playing chess and she's very curious and wants to learn this game. And it doesn't take very long before he realizes that Beth is very, very talented. She's really, really, really good with chess. This book talks about a lot how she she thinks about chess, how she has to struggle with being a woman playing chess. It also tells the story about her being adopted and how she grows this love for her adoptive mom. I think it's a story that has many layers and it's a really good read. I also really like the TV series, the Netflix series. I thought it was really close to the book in many ways. There are some changes but I don't mind those at all. All in all, I thought it was a really good adoption. Then I finally got around to read The Merciless Ones, which is the second book in the series, so I'm not going to talk about this book, but I remember reading the first book and I was thinking, oh, I quite like this book, but there are things that I really miss, therefore I, it's not like top notch for me. That being said, this book, on the other hand, had all those things that I missed in the first book. The first book kind of dwelled into world building and things like that. The first book set the foundation for, for the story and for this, this book, I guess, in many ways. And I'm so happy that I actually decided to read the second one because I wasn't sure that I would read the second one since I wasn't that excited about the first one. But I'm very, very glad that I read the second one and I am hoping that the third book will be out in not too long and that I can deep dive into that because I absolutely love this story. It's fantasy and it's very good fantasy at that. 
The last book I read in May was The Spanish Daughter by Lorena Hughes and this is a historical novel about a woman who, who inherits her, her dad and gets a big chunk of his property. On her way over from Spain to Ecuador, somebody tries to kill her and her husband actually tries to protect her. And by doing that, he himself is killed. It doesn't take long before she understands that if she's going to try to figure out who the killer of her husband is, because there is not much help to being had, she has to try to figure out who it is by herself and she takes her husband's clothes and puts them on herself and pretends to be him. Arriving in Ecuador in Southern America, she is dressed as her husband and has like a beard to look like a man more so and glasses to cover up her eyes. She is trying to figure out what's happened and there's a lot of family drama and there's a lot of stuff going on and she uncovers a lot of secrets by being a man and this book is not only this a story just like a story like a mystery but it's also kind of plays with gender roles and how it is to get like the knowledge of being a man rather than being a modern woman historically of course such an interesting and it's such well written and I thought it was a really good book. I have a reading blog and review coming up in not too long so stay tuned for that and i guess that's it for this time and i will see you in my next video bye